My friend Keith has an uncle with dementia. Long story short, his uncle usually lives with his grandma, but she was in Florida with some church group for the week, and Keith was going on a business trip, so while he was gone, he hired me to house sit. This included watching after and taking care of his uncle. I'll call him Uncle Nick. Keith would only be gone for two days. On the first day of my house sitting, I mostly just hung out in the backyard reading and tanning, or in the living room watching TV. I cooked twice, each time I made extra food for Uncle Nick, but I never saw him come out of his room upstairs. I went up to knock on his door lightly and tell him I made food. I heard a grunting noise on the other side of the door. I assumed that was his way of acknowledging me. I never actually met his uncle. Oddly enough, we weren't introduced when Keith hired me for this little job. Uncle Nick was fully aware of my being there, at least that's what Keith said. He never left his room to eat while I was in the living room, so I went up to Keith's spare room for the night. I left the door cracked open so I could listen, and I eventually heard a door down the hall opening and unsettlingly quick and heavy footsteps moving down the hall and down the stairs. Seconds later, I heard the same footsteps rush back up the stairs and back to the room. Then the door slammed shut. It was honestly a little unnerving. Hard to explain, just the intensity of his footsteps, like he was avoiding me or something. The next day was pretty similar to the first. I made two meals and left the food on the counter for Uncle Nick both times. When I was laying in the backyard again, I came back in to see the plate was empty, so I guess he was really avoiding me. I went back out to tan some more, and when I thought about it, I looked up to the bedroom Nick was staying at, and there he was looking at me through the window. I think when he noticed me, he ducked down. I felt so uncomfortable that I folded up the blanket and went back inside and up to the spare bedroom. It was okay. One more night of this and I'd be home. I made dinner that night and left him another plate. As I walked up to the spare bedroom, I noticed his bedroom door was open now. First time I'd seen that. Maybe he was becoming less shy. I went to brush my teeth and go to my room for the rest of the night to give him his space. I was having a rough time sleeping though, I just wasn't tired at all. While laying there in the dark, I heard a short creaking sound coming from inside the room, even over the noise of the fan next to me. I sat up and looked around, still able to slightly see in the dark room. I didn't see anything. More specifically, I didn't see Uncle Nick. I was getting paranoid, honestly. Why was I becoming so creeped out by him? I lay back down on my side, facing the wall next to the bed. I ignored the little sounds I thought I was hearing in my head for the most part, but when I heard a very faint groan, I sat up and turned off the fan to listen. I heard breathing. I turned to the far right side of the room by the desk, and there he was. Sitting on the desk chair turned to me. I screamed in fear, and he came up to me going shh and covered my mouth with his hand. In the moment, I thought he was trying to suffocate me, so I pushed him off of me and ran to the nearest bathroom to lock the door. I listened as I heard his manic footsteps rush back to his room and slam the door. My heart was pounding inside my chest. I called Keith and told him about it. He sounded like he wasn't even that shocked, that's the scary thing. He told me it's best I sleep in the bathroom with the door locked. And when he said that, it said to me that his Uncle Nick is potentially dangerous, which scares me even more. I slept maybe three hours max that night on the bathroom floor, and in the morning I quickly packed my backpack and waited out in the backyard for Keith to return. He paid me extra for what I had to deal with, and I suggested he get his uncle some serious help, because I think he has more than dementia and I still don't know what his intentions were that night. My dad once told us a true scary story of his from when he was in his 20s. When he was still living with my grandparents, he lived next door to this older couple in their 60s. One winter, the wife Margie next door went missing. The husband knocked on their door and asked my grandparents if they'd seen her, but unfortunately they hadn't. 
No one had, apparently. A few days later, my dad was out at the park playing football with friends. That's when it started to snow. They played in the snow for a while until it got to be too much. Then they all went their separate ways back home. When my dad got home, he realized his parents were gone. My dad started the fireplace and went to his room, which was adjacent to the living room, to throw his stuff on his bed. Then he went to take a warm shower. When he got out from the shower, he thought he heard humming from the living room outside the bathroom. He opened the door a crack in his towel and said, Mom? The humming stopped, but a creaking sound continued. My dad threw on his clothes in the bathroom and walked out into the living room. There in my grandpa's old rocking sofa chair was Margie from next door. She looked straight at my dad and said, it was so cold I needed to get warm. My dad ran next door to get the husband, but when the two of them returned to the living room, the sofa chair was empty and Margie was gone. The two of them searched the whole house together, calling her name, but she wasn't there. Now, this much of the story was enough to creep me out already when my dad told it to us, but it didn't end there, and the really scary part didn't happen until the next day, when Margie's dead body was found in the man next door's crawl space, where she apparently tripped and sliced her head open on a sharp object. He only found her because the smell became so unbearable he smelt it from the garage. The thing is, the body was deemed to have been dead for at least three days, yet my dad saw her in the living room just the day before. To this day, my dad believes he saw the ghost of Margie in my grandparents' living room that day, and my dad's not one to make stuff like this up. When he first told us this story when I was nine, let's just say I didn't get much sleep that night. There's a lot of Black Lives Matter protesting going on in my area. Now, before I write anything else, I want to disclose that I fully support the Black Lives Matter movement. However, this is my personal opinion that the looting and rioting are not okay, and anyone participating in those acts should not be associated with the peaceful protesters. But unfortunately, mixed in with the peaceful protesters are the looters and rioters hiding in plain sight. A few nights ago, many stores and houses in the town next to mine were broken into and robbed, and a lot of car windows were smashed. There were rumors from the cops in our friend group that our town would be a target the next night. We stayed up a little later than usual the next night for that reason, and while watching a movie together as a family, we had to mute the TV when we heard yells from outside. We checked out the window, and a large group of young men with masks on were parading down the street. They weren't holding protest signs or anything. They were just being loud and by the sound of it cursing a lot. But they didn't appear to be damaging any property. So we went back to our movie. Then after that, my parents went to sleep. I stayed up later in my room playing a video game with the headset on so I could talk to my friends. Eventually, I grew bored and tired and turned the system off and went downstairs to get a glass of water for bed. As I passed the little half stairway to our den on my way to the kitchen, I looked down there and saw something big sitting on the carpet by the window. I went down the stairs, and when I picked it up, I realized what it was. It was the glass of the window broken, but all taped up as if to make the glass shattering easier or quieter. I ran to my parents' room to get my dad. When he saw it, he called the police. The response time was outrageously long. My dad said we were lucky the line wasn't busy, as the 911 calls recently by us have skyrocketed. When the police came to search the house, it didn't seem anything was stolen or anyone was in the house. They had to respond to another call within 20 minutes, but they said to call back if something else happened. My dad and I opted to sleep in the den for the rest of the night to prevent anything else from happening, so my mom went back upstairs. Time rolled on slowly, but eventually I think my dad fell asleep. A large rift of wind hit me in the face through the opening where glass used to be, causing me to open my eyes and look at the window. No one was out there, but for some reason I thought I heard something come from upstairs, so I went up the half flight of stairs thinking maybe it was my mom. When I got to the kitchen, I continued to hear noises from above me, so I walked upstairs and the noises were still coming from above me. What else was above? The attic. 
I went to the upstairs storage room, which had the attic door. I quietly opened it, revealing the short stairway to the attic. This is when the noises stopped. I didn't flick the light switch on. I just tiptoed halfway up the stairs to listen. That's all. The heavy silence was terrifying, considering I knew I was hearing noises from up here just a second ago. I waited on one of the middle steps to hear something. Then, I felt the hairs on my head being moved. Someone's fingers started running through the curls in my hair as I heard this deep, short cackling sound. I let out a cry for help from my dad as all the confidence immediately left my body and I was overcome with horror. I ran out from the attic to meet my dad halfway down at the kitchen. He didn't go up to the attic, he once again called the police instead, while we heard shuffling and thumps from above us. The cops once again came, and upon entering the attic with their guns drawn, were able to locate someone. They came out of the attic with some creepy old man with a mask on, looking at my family and I and laughing as he walked out. When the cops asked him in the back of the car what he was planning on doing, he simply admitted right away that he's seen all the looting going on on the news, that he wanted to join in on the fun. He made his way to our attic because he said that's where people store their most valuable possessions. Based on the way the man spoke and acted in general, you could tell he was certifiably insane. He told the cops that he was alone. Oddly enough, he answered all their questions no problem. Once again, this guy clearly had some screws loose or missing entirely. Feeling him brush his hand through my hair like that will probably haunt me for a long time, maybe even life. And one thing is for sure, I don't feel safe going in that attic anymore. <laughs>